unloaded just with the scope on and right about at our 20 volts is where I've wind the secondary to where see I've got right about 340 volts peak to peak or so so that gives me about you know pretty close to 120 RMS 20 volts or so is a pretty good pretty good voltage I think for what the current draw is See it about 20 volts. See, we're pulling a little over 2 amps, so it's over 40 watts, a little, little over 40 watts. But that's about full brightness right there. So it's fairly efficient, about 75 watts, and that's overdriving it a little bit, probably getting too hot. It was a 90 watt halogen floodlight. So with that, about 20 volts when we get our line voltage. Pulling about 4 amps. So it's not bad. And that sucker is bright. Full bright. Very warm, immediately putting out a whole bunch of heat. So something like that's actually pretty efficient. It's pulling about 80 watts, a little over 80 watts, and it's right about full brightness. But if I pull 90, push 90 into it, then that's yeah, it's about what you're going to get out of it from the mains. So that sucker is hot. So it's not bad, and down to about 12 volts closer to about only half line voltage so it still gets pretty damn bright but it's not full bright until I get up to about 20 volts and that's when it gets real impressive this by the way is a bifiler wired in series so it's double the turns so at about 12 volts now Only at a uh, hundred and ninety volts or so peak to peak, so about you know seventy volts, something like that. So that's why uh, you know, it's not fully going to drive a bulb. So of course, if I wanted to use a twelve volt supply and have it pull about twice as much current, then um, I would just increase the number of turns on here about by twice as much. Here's one of those little uh, RFZ forty four N Mazzilli drivers stacking these little cheap. CBB capacitors, 400 volt, 100 nanofarad. These right here, stacking those worked out pretty good. I can't quite remember the frequency I brought it to, but I, I basically brought it to the point where, the, let's say, the standby current draw wasn't heating up that coil way too much. I just found this to be sort of a reasonable 
frequency to run in that. Just use this as a little, you know, 100, 150 watt or so induction heater. We run it from about 12 to 16 volts. Just use a little coil and use it to uh, heat up stuff for all sorts of crafts and projects. Put it on. And you see, pulls a little bit under two amps. So I found if I bump the uh, capacitance up a little bit, drop the frequency down to the point where it maybe pulls a little over two amps, then I got really good performance out of it. But like I say, the only downside was it heated up this little coil a little bit too quickly. I feel like the performance I get is good enough and it doesn't overheat that coil too much to the point where that insulation starts to melt down. Put this little guy in there. So I'll show the current draw go up. Put that guy in there. Do a little <laughs> resistor which hardly pulls anything. You know, it brings it up like a couple hundred milliamps tops. And it does heat that little thing up though. Another one I made a while ago. This one's got some small IGBTs in there. This one uses the single primary. It's got two separate chokes. And this one's just got the common wound choke on here. And it's kind of dirty, but this one uses a little transformer here. It's probably got, I don't know, like a, over 100 turns on there. I think something like 12 volts gives me easily something maybe four or five hundred volt but it's a 2200 microfarad 250 volt capacitor so i'm going to have the supply set at 12 volts and i've got the scope hooked up would just be a few more to get it to a couple hundred and you know that's 2200 microfarad so that's not bad the straight ac takes about nine volts input before this thing starts to get about full bright Pulls a couple amps. See a little under nine doesn't quite get full bright. Bring it up just a little bit more. So right about there, get the full ignition. And 12 volts starts pushing it a little too hard there. So that's too much voltage for one. And for two, I need about 18 volts. But those suckers are bright. Half wave rectified DC output you know, still gets crazy bright. Pulls a little more juice, I think. Now, the interesting thing about this little circuit has always been the amount of current you can get from the arcs. So, while you know it's only in the hundreds of volts, you know, once you start pulling an arc, an incredible heat off of it. I'll cut it on, you know, pulls a little less than about half an amp, and then, uh, when I try to pull an arc from it,
So yeah, <laughs> I mean, you can see how much heat can develop in those arcs. There's really hardly any change in the current draw when I did short it. Can't even really see the needle move, just barely. So it probably draws about another 500 milliamps or something. Or I mean, uh, 50 milliamps, I mean, dead shorting it. It's just when you start pulling that hot arc, which isn't in itself, it's supposed to be a dead short, right? You know, that's just the interesting thing about it. So you think a hot arc would be very similar to a dead short, but in this case, it's not. So that's actually pulling significant current. While doing that, it's not really doing anything at all. So that's what's kind of cool about these EVS drivers.